This video introduces the types of input and output devices needed for designing a temperature control system. Additionally, temperature controllers are equipped with optional functions that enhance the system's convenience and safety. We will also introduce a detailed overview of the main option functions, so please stay tuned until the end. First, let's explain the types of input devices. There are mainly thermocouples, platinum resistance thermometer, and radiation thermometers as input devices. Generally, thermocouples and PRT are commonly used. Let's explain the differences between thermocouples and PRTs. Thermocouples have a fast thermal response and can be used over a wide temperature range, including high temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. They are also cost-effective, making them widely used in various devices. PRTs offer good measurement accuracy, but are limited to use within the range of normal to medium temperatures. Due to their higher cost, they are used in devices that require high precision, such as scientific instruments and semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Thermocouples vary by material and are chosen based on measurement range, accuracy, and environment. K-type thermocouples are popular for their wide range and low cost. T-type thermocouples are used for precise low temperature measurements, while R, S, and B types are for high temperatures. W-type thermocouples are used for extremely high temperatures, around 2,000 degrees Celsius. Click here for the details about our temperature sensor. Lastly, let's explain infrared temperature sensors. These sensors estimate temperature by measuring the infrared radiation emitted by an object. They are used for measuring the temperature of moving objects or objects whose quality may change upon contact, such as semiconductors and food. However, accuracy may decrease when measuring metals with low emissivity. Click here for the details about our infrared temperature sensors. Next, let's introduce the types of output devices. The main output devices include relays, solid-state relays, and power controllers. These devices receive control output from the temperature controller to turn the heater's power on and off. Output devices are primarily selected based on the response speed and control method of the target being controlled. Relays open and close contacts using an electromagnet. Due to the limited lifespan of the contacts based on the number of open-close cycles, they are not suitable for equipment that require frequent and rapid switching. They are commonly used for on off control. Additionally, relays generate less heat, allowing for smaller output device sizes. Relays are built into temperature controllers with relay output types, enabling direct on off control of heaters. If the heater current exceeds the relay's allowable current, the heater is turned on and off via the magnetic contactor. Solid state relays use semiconductor elements. Since they have no physical contacts, there is no lifespan due to the number of open-close cycles. They can frequently switch the heater on and off, making them suitable for PID control. However, they have higher power losses and require larger sizes for heat dissipation. Click here for the details about our SSRs. When using SSR, a temperature controller with a voltage output is used. The SSR turns the heater on as long as it receives voltage from the temperature controller. Power controllers use semiconductor elements like SSRs, but can switch the heater on and off even faster. They can open and close once per half cycle of an AC power supply, about every 8.3 milliseconds at 60 Hertz. For example, they are used with ceramic heaters for rapid heating. Many power controllers have a feature to suppress inrush current making them suitable for controlling low-resistance heaters at room temperature such as lamp heaters. However, because they are more multifunctional than SSRs, they tend to be larger in size. They also generate heat and can produce noise, which may require countermeasures. Click here for the details about our power controllers. When using a power controller, a temperature controller with a linear current output type is used the temperature controller continuously outputs a current of 420 milliamps to the power controller, which adjusts the on time of the heater based on the current value. Finally, let's explain the option functions of the temperature controller. 
Commonly used option function include alarm outputs, heater burnout alarms, communications, and event inputs. First, look at about the alarm outputs that detects temperature anomalies. When the current temperature deviates from the specified range, an alarm is triggered via a relay signal from the auxiliary output terminal. This signal can be used to stop the equipment or to activate a warning light. Next, look at about the heater burnout alarms. The current flowing to the heater is measured by a current transformer, and in the event of a heater burnout, an alarm is output via a relay signal from the auxiliary output terminal. This system detects heater burnout early, allowing the equipment to be stopped in time to prevent defective products. Next, the temperature controller can communicate with a higher level device. Our temperature controller E5CC uses RS-485 communication. By connecting the HMI panel and temperature controller through a PLC, you can set like target temperature and PID and issue operation commands such as run stop. Finally, let's explain event inputs. Event input allows you to change the settings of the temperature controller or issue operation commands like run stop using external signals. For example, you can use an external switch to change the set temperature for each product, helping to prevent setting errors. This video introduced the types of input-output devices and the optional features of the temperature controller. Click here for the details about our temperature controllers.